106. First item on the agenda is invocation of the Pledge of Allegiance of the U.S. and Texas flag, Chapter G.H. Jones. Mr. Kelly, you're going to lead the... It's a good honor to come here this morning. Thank you, Mr. Barnum, today. Thank you for all of your blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for the opportunity to come here this morning. Thank you for your blessings that you have bestowed upon us. This is the day you have made it, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Please, by coming here, you're going to commission me. As you do business with Brazos County, direct me and lead them and guide them in the right direction and in the right path. Pray for the Brazos County Courthouse family, that you will bless each individual name by name, wherever that may be. Pray for the Texans. Pray for those up in Washington, D.C. Pray for our black troops and all of our law enforcement officers who lie here in jeopardy each day. Now be with each of us. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor to the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America. input and our concerns. Let's move. Good morning. I just wanted to uh, uh, take this time to just let everybody know that tomorrow at 9.30 here in this area where we're sitting at and at 1.30 tomorrow, I will be conducting um, how to give great customer service uh, training that will probably take about 35 minutes. So if there's anybody who's interested in um, whether you handle citizens on a on a face-to-face -face basis or on the phone. Sometimes we have to handle irate customers, or irate citizens on the phone. So it's going to be a really good training. So we'll be here at nine. I'll be here at 9:30 tomorrow and at 1:30. And I want to thank uh, Ken's here. Uh, we had training this morning at uh, Road and Bridge on personal protective equipment. It went really well. Um, and I want to thank you for your cooperation with all your employees as well. So thank you, sir. With the commissioners, you think we need need this remedial training? <laughs> okay. Any other citizens' input or, and our concerns? Hearing none, we'll do the presentations. Uh, annual report from Agland Humane Society, Kathy. Good morning. Let's see, howdy. Okay. Um, I'm going to start out with a little story, and it'll tie to the annual report. Okay. Uh, people wonder how I became involved with the Aggieland Humane Society, and uh, when I moved here in 1980, there wasn't an animal shelter for 100 miles any direction. And at that time, there weren't a lot of jobs. My husband was an Aggie going to college, and uh, I became a humane officer for the city of college. College Station, and City of College Station was boarding their animals at a vet. So after the three days waiting for an owner to claim them, if they weren't claimed, there was no good place for them to go. And I adopted many of them for $15, and many of them ended up in my backyard while I tried to find them homes. So when uh, I joined the group that was working with the three governments to begin the uh, animal shelter work, um, Later, when we were building the building, I was uh, able to become the founding director at the Brazos Animal Shelter. So long story short, then I had a bigger place to put all the animals that needed homes. Um, so uh, the next part of that story is I'm going to tell you about a cat. One-third of the animals we get are cats and kittens. And there was a cat named Precious. And Precious was brought in to the animal shelter with a litter of kittens. And Precious was then spayed, and the kittens were spayed and neutered, and they were all placed for adoption. If Precious had not been brought to the animal shelter and was on the streets, Precious and her kittens would have had more cats and kittens. And it's a pyramid because Precious would have had three litters that year. And two of her litters would have had litters, and one of her litters would have had a litter. And Precious would have created 50 kitty cats in one long summer. 
So one cat spay equals saving 50 cat lives. So we don't need to be getting 1,000 cats a year. We need to look forward to preventing all the unwanted births of kitty cats that are being fed by gracious citizens who worry about the kitty cats on the street. So back to the annual report. The county has been bringing us the stray unwanted and animals treated with cruelty, and we appreciate the government contract for our charity to provide services for Brazos County. About one-third of the animals we get come from either the citizens of Brazos County in the unincorporated areas or the four field officers in the sheriff's department. And the animals are not only dogs and cats. Of course, we get the skunks and the different wildlife animals that have um, potential to have rabies, like, like bats and skunks and raccoons and things. So we are your, also your local rabies control authority. So we make all the decisions on rabies observation and wildlife testing with the state health department. Um, but one of our goals we set back in uh, 2012 on the dogs and cats is to save all the adoptables. And of course, we did that when we focused on it. And then the next year, we set a goal to save 90% of the adoptable and treatable animals that come into our care. And lo and behold, when you get an animal that's very sick or very injured or not yet old enough to be adopted, you incur a lot more expense. And we seriously focused on fundraising to save the animals that were treatable, that needed behavior modification, needed medical care, needed fostering. And you'll see that our numbers are just amazing because this community responded when we set that goal. Last year, we had over 11,000, close to 12,000 volunteer hours. We had over 13,000 foster family hours. Those are people who take the pets that aren't ready for adoption into their homes until they're ready to come back for adoption. We had 546 lives saved just by the people who took those pets into their homes and then brought them back when they were adoptable. And we have 197 foster families that take those animals into their homes, whether they're sick or too young or needing medical rehabilitation or behavioral rehabilitation. And by golly, there's a lot of logistics to that. They're, one of our staff carries a cell phone with 197 people's phone numbers in it, you know, and they call her seven days a week because there's always something going on with a puppy or a kitten or something. So lots of good things are happening, and when we look at the big picture where we're just quantifying the dogs and cats getting out alive, we had our first month ever where every adoptable and treatable animal was saved, and that was in February when we hit 100%, and that is amazing because you know there's a lot of care and love that goes into each animal and to have couple hundred animals get out like that is really amazing. We are regularly increasing our statistics every month in our live release rate. That means no matter what's wrong with them, how many get out alive. And our goal is to get to the 90% rate. But that's tough when you get a lot of feral cats, when you get a lot of one-week-old babies that are sick, and you get a lot of hit-by-car animals. So we're still challenged with hitting 90% on the, the whole live release rate. And there are some gaps. That's why I told you about Precious. Okay, One of the gaps in our community is that we are one of the few large communities in Texas without a high volume, low cost spay neuter option for our community. We don't have somebody who's doing logistics to provide subsidized spay neuter for uh, low-income families, for the feral cats and the community cats that are on the street, for the um, pit bulls that fill the animal shelters nationally. Good news is we got a great grant from the Texas Animal Friendly License Plate Fund at the state of Texas for $15,000 a year to spay and neuter pit bulls. And they liked our grant so much, we asked them for 10000 they gave us 15000 and then they called back and they said, would you like it for two years? So we're 
investing $30,000 with our local vets in five counties to spay and neuter pit bulls for free with free microchip and free rabies just to make a dent in these dogs that are so popular but aren't seeing the veterinarians to get spayed and neutered. So good news, we're tackling one little element of the low-cost, high-volume spay-neuter, but there's so much more, and it's the cats. We really, really need to provide a way to get the cat spayed and neutered for everyone. Some people don't have $200 of disposable income to take their cat to be spayed and neutered. So it will be up to a nonprofit with a charitable mission to work on that someday. And I'm just telling you, that's missing in our community. You can go to Austin, you can go to Waco, you can go to all the communities in Dallas, you can go to Houston, you can go to any major metroplex, and there will be a high-volume, low-cost spay-neuter clinic to provide free or subsidized spays and neuters, which would be about one-quarter the cost of a regular surgery because they do 25 a day and they strategically triage them. It's like a little spay-neuter factory. And uh, so we hope that we'll have that here someday so that we will not have all these thousands of babies that are unadoptable coming in and having hundreds of families trying to take them in to save them and bring them back when they're eight weeks old. All righty. So the numbers... Each animal is important, and they do cost money to save. Um, in 2012-13 fiscal year, we took in 869 animals from Brazos County. In the 13-14 fiscal year, we took 976. In 2014-15, we took in over 1,000, 1,017. Our community is growing. The need is growing. It's 150 more animals than a couple years ago, and uh, each one is a challenge once you get past the easy-to-adopt ones. So we're letting you know that we're taking care of that for you. And besides the feral cap trap neuter release programs and the spay neuter that would help with the overpopulation, the shelter doesn't have a shelter medicine veterinarian, and it's on our dream wish list. So someday, when somebody wants to endow a shelter medicine veterinarian, we will look forward to having a full-time veterinarian on the staff that will interface with our A&M teaching programs, that will have a surgery suite and do the logistics for all the subsidized spay-neuters. And the other piece then as we grow futuristically would be to hand up, have an animal behaviorist or an animal trainer because some of the pets are just thrown away because they didn't get trained. So we have some challenges to make them a nice adoptable pet to place in a home. So those are on our wish list. I'm going to hand out your annual reports. The, the good news is we have a wonderful community that supports us, and we have an amazing giving circle of people who've pledged for five years to support us. And we're giving tours twice a month for people to hear our story and find our location. We are um, truly, truly blessed to have been given a, a planned gift. So when you look at the pie chart on the, the budget, you'll see that the income was much higher than the expenses. That was a one-time sale of oil and gas mineral rights that were given to us in the early 90s. And uh, so we are a strong charity investing in our mission because we have a little bit of savings. Here you go. I sure appreciate your time and attention. Do you have any questions? Well, thank you. Yeah, those kitty cats are twice as productive as the doggies. <laughs> have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we will consider and take action on items uh, 4 through 23. Approval of 2016 Humana Plan.
documents. A, plan management agreement uh, amendment. B, summary plan description authorization. And C, summary plan description. Move for approval A, B, and C. Second. Motion made to second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No motion carries. Number five is permission for the Jubilant Services Department to accept monetary donation in the amount of $200 from George's Plank Body Shop to be used for the recidiv recidivism reduction program summer youth activities. Move for approval. Second. Motion made to second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No motion carries. Number six is a request from Information Technology Department for the acceptance of donated property from ARC Government Solutions for 10 Panasonic body worn cameras valued at $9,635.30. Move for approval. Second. Motion made to second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, the Fleet Service Department is requesting that Juvenile Union 6631, a 1999 Dodge van, uh, Ram van, to be transferred to Fleet Services for future repurposing. Move for approval. Second. Motion made second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number eight is the Fleet Service Department is requesting the Juvenile Unit 5. 5453, a 2002 Ford E-150 van to be transferred to Fleet Services for future repurposing. Move for approval. Second. Motion made second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Carriers, number nine, should request transfer for 2009 Dodge Charger, asset number VEH 0000016 from Constable. Precinct 4 to District Attorney's Office. Move for approval. Second. Motion made second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No motion carries. <coughs> Number 10 is approval of the following job descriptions. A. Temporary attendant building and grounds, 1040 hours, class code 80832, position 4, exposition complex. B. Intern detention officer, intake release, class code 1516, position 1, Sheriff's Office, Jail Administration. C. Intern detention officer, intake release, class code 1516, position 2, Sheriff's Office, Jail Administration. And D. Intern uh, detention officer, intake release, class code uh, 1516, position 3, Sheriff's Office, Jail Administration. Move for approval. Second. Motion made second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? carries. Number 11 is extension of contract with Oleana Torre Day to provide juvenile psychological services. Move for approval. Second. Motion made second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number 12 is cancellation of contract 2016-162. Copiers for FY 2017 with Davidson Document Solutions due to not being able to hold pricing because of bitter error. Motion made second. Second. Motion made second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number 13 is word of contract 2016-162. Copiers for FY 2017. And I think the day day you I move for approval. Thank you. Motion made second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number 14 is purchasing a request for Commissioner's Court to declare surplus property as salvage in accordance to Local Government Code 263.152 and authorize the destruction or other disposal of items that cannot be sold to the public. Move for approval. Second. Motion made second for discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number 15 is acceptance of a special warranty deed from C.W. Henry and wife Elizabeth A. Henry for 0 .0356 acre of land to be used for the uh, bridge replacement along Trussell Road located precinct 2. Move for approval. Second. 
you know, here we are, and, and they inspect, and it passed with flying colors up to the, to the inspector. Uh, he was very complimentary to Jay. Right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, number 29 is announcement of interest out of the possible future agenda topics. Hearing none, number 30 is call for citizens' input and our concerns. 